Welcome to Bringing the Word to You. I am your host, Tim Greco, coming to you from Omaha, Nebraska. I know how hard and difficult it is for some of you to get to church and Bible study, so I want to go ahead and bring the word to you. You know, God is a good God. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. All thanks to my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the opportunity to teach his word, thanking him for taking me where I once was to where he has brought me to today. Before we get started on this powerful word the Lord has just for you, coming out of Joshua chapter 1, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. We can't thank you enough. We thank you for this television program, Lord. We thank you for everybody who makes it possible to happen, Lord God. Lord, I might be here on the screen, but there are people behind the scenes that make this happen, and, and we give them thanks, Lord, as we give you thanks. Lord, I pray for everybody who is listening. Lord, touch them, heal them, anoint them. May the scales fall from their eyes so they're able to see your glorious light. May nothing come out of my mouth that's not of you, Lord. We pray for a fresh anointing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for your on prayers, love, support, and contributions to the ministry. Many of you know this ministry has a radio ministry as well. And you can go on our website that's on the screen there, timothygrecoministries.org, and check out the radio programs as they air here in Omaha and Lincoln. All the times and dates are on the site. We are raising money to continue reaching those people in six different states, over three million people because of your generous contributions. Please prayerfully consider giving, and you can do so on the website. My social media is on there as well. If you go to the bottom, please request me, message me, and it'd be a privilege to speak with you. Amen. Thank you guys so much. So let's jump right into it here in Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, and you, all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. We could stop right there. See, God called Moses to free the Israelites out of Egypt. The Israelites ended up in Egypt because there was a famine in Israel, and Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, sent his children over to Egypt to get some food. And it just so happened that Joseph was second in command in the land of Egypt. And the very ones that threw Joseph into the pit, the very ones that sold Joseph into slavery, the very ones that plotted to kill Joseph came to him to get some food. Now, Joseph recognized his brothers, but his brothers didn't recognize him. Ooh, we could sit right there the whole program. Many people have done you wrong in your life. Many people tried to throw you into a pit, per se. Many people have tried to sell you into slavery, per se, and now they're coming to you for help. They're coming to you on ways to survive. They're coming to you for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, guidance, and direction. You know, one of the many great things the Lord has done for me in my life is the very ones that said I wouldn't make it, the very ones that doubted me, the very ones that said that I would end up dead or in prison, the very ones that said I wouldn't amount to anything are the very ones that are now coming to me for guidance, direction, and answers to their questions. You know, I'm so thankful for the Lord because he put a bus bench advertisement in the same neighborhood that I grew up in here in Omaha, Nebraska. And everybody in that neighborhood that said I wouldn't make it, well, now guess what? When they drive out of the neighborhood, they see a park bench advertisement with my big giant smile on it and our radio and television times. Who didn't make it now? That's what God will do. 
You don't have to raise your finger to your enemies. You don't have to say anything to your enemies. The Lord will put a park bench advertisement with your picture on it. So everybody that said you wouldn't make it has to drive by it and look at it. Heck, maybe even the ones that said you wouldn't make it have to sit on that park bench and wait for the bus right in front of your big giant smile and the success that God has made you to be. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, Moses said, who do I tell them sent me? And, and the Lord said, tell them I am sent you. Yahweh. You go to the book of John and Jesus mentioned seven different times, seven, seven different I am's. Seven is the number for completion. The word of God is beautifully written. No contradictions. It is by no accident that that has happened. But here, when Moses died, the Lord spoke to Joshua. You are in training. When I was called into ministry many years ago, I was a co-host on somebody's program. I was in training. The Lord doesn't just set you up there in front of a thousand people and call you a pastor and hand you a microphone and say, get to teaching. You have to go through training. The Lord did not just put me here and, and hand me a microphone and say, hey, go at it. No, I had to go through training. And while that individual whose program I was on many years ago stole from me, and it looked like a bad situation, what the enemy tried to harm me with turned out for my good because now the Lord has blessed me with my own. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I was in training. Joshua was in training. You have to be ready because opportunities will land in your lap. Are you ready or are you not? Are you playing games in your everyday life? Are you too busy indulging in alcohol or indulging with the drugs or indulging with the sexual immorality or indulging with the pornography or indulging in the people and places and things of this world? Or are you spending time in the word? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you ready to be the next man up? Because there's gonna be an opportunity, just like when Moses died, there was an opportunity for Joshua. There was an opportunity for Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, now therefore arise. Today the Lord is telling you to arise. Get up and go to church. Get up and read the word. Get up and go pray. Get up and go worship. Get everybody out of your life that doesn't belong. And ask the Lord to put people in your life that do. Arise. We draw near to God and God draws near to us. We go to church and then we receive a blessing. We open up the word and then we hear from God. We start to worship the Lord. The Lord speaks to us. It's a it's a it's a step of faith. We then God. We do, then God does. We say, then God speaks. Because God is a gentleman and he's waiting for your faith to be initiated, to be, to be, to be active. Sorry for my vocabulary, but you guys understand what I'm saying. We do, then God does. We say, then God says. We get up and God meets us. Draw near to God, God will draw near to you. Arise, go over this Jordan and you shall all this people to the land which I am given to them, the children of Israel. The Lord has so much waiting for you. Are you getting up and going to get it? God has so much awaiting you. Are you getting up to get it? God has so much awaiting you. Are you so caught up in the distractions of this world around the wrong people going to the wrong places and doing the wrong things and being deceived and derailed and distracted from the things that God has for you? 
If I was still out there in the world today, I wouldn't be on here sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. I never would have thought in a million years that I'd be on television, and I never thought in a million years that I'd be wearing a suit and tie. But glory to God, that's what he does, and that's who he is. In Joshua 1, 3, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. And I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Everywhere you go, it'll be your territory. Darkness has to flee when you show up on the scene. See, you got a great light living on the inside of you and his name is Jesus. You have a great light living on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit. The Lord has put the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And the Bible says, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. We don't flee where the enemy is at. The enemy flees where we go. We are triumphant. We already won. We have victory. The enemy does what we say. We don't do what the enemy says. We have power and authority over the enemy and his minions because of who God is. We don't fear nothing but God. The enemy fears everything, especially God. And those who reject a relationship with Jesus, they have to live in fear because they serve a lowercase g God who is the king of lies, who is the king of fear. Joshua 1.5, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. Tim, get on that television channel and preach the word. I will be with you. Whoever's listening right now, go and do what God is calling you to do. He will be with you. I was talking to a brother yesterday, and he's uh, in a relationship, and um, his girlfriend wants him to pray with her, and his girlfriend wants him to read the word with her, and, and he was, you know, just kind of conversating with me, saying, you know, he's never done anything like that before, and, and he's a little nervous about it, and I said, man, don't do it. Just do it. Open up the word. The Lord will be with you. Just start praying. God will have the words out of your mouth. Prayer is just a conversation between you and God. Just start talking. Lord God, I've never done this before, and I believe that you're listening right now. Lord, I thank you for my life. I thank you for my finances. I thank you for everything. I thank you for my relationship. Lord, I thank you. See, if you don't know what to pray for, there's always two things you can pray for. We can always repent, which I do all day, every day. I, I, I have a, a, a visual of a, of a dry erase board and, and any of my sins on that dry erase board. And every time I repent, the, the Lord comes by with that eraser and just erases them off the dry erase board. So all day, every day, I'm keeping my dry erase board clean. I'm walking and talking with the Lord. I'm driving with the Lord. And, and another thing you can pray for, um, other than repentance, is giving thanks. All day, every day, I'm on the phone with God. The only way to talk to the enemy is if you click over when he beeps in. The younger generation is like, hey, what does he mean click over when they beep in? I don't know. Ask somebody that was born uh, from 1990 and back. <laughs> uh, maybe 1998-ish and back. We used to have house phones. And the only way to talk to the other person when you were on the house phone was, was if somebody beeped in and you hit the beep. That means you're getting another call on the other end and you had to click over to talk to them. If you stay on the phone with God, the enemy might be beeping in, but you have to make an attempt to hit the button to click over and talk to him. Don't hit the button and click over to talk to him. Stay on the phone with God. Give God thanks. Give God praise. Repent all day, every day. Lord, thank you for today. Lord, thank you for my health. Lord, thank you for this ministry. Lord, thank you for 
blessing me in all areas. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, thank you for this fresh air. Lord, thank you for the roof over my head. Thank you for the cup of water. Lord, thank you, thank you. Lord, please forgive me of my sins. Lord, I messed up last week. Please forgive me. Lord, I might have messed up yesterday. Please forgive me all day, every day. You're in constant fellowship with the Lord. Joshua 1, 6, be strong and of good courage. Strong and of good courage. The Lord did not call you to be weak. Stop trying to get right to get with God because you'll never get right on your own. But when you get with God, he'll give you his Holy Spirit and you'll say things and do things that you never thought imaginable. I am not on here today because I'm Tim, because I ain't nothing but a dirty, filthy rag compared to the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I am on here today by the grace of God. He has given me power. He has given me strength. He has given me authority. He has given me wisdom. He has given me knowledge. He has given me understanding. He has given me the ability to teach his word. Today, he told me to be strong. Today, he told me to be courageous. For those who reject a relationship with Jesus, they live for the enemy. And yes, if you're living for the enemy, you better live in fear. You better live in worry. You better live in anxiety because that's what the lowercase g God of this world system does. But when you give your life to Jesus, we rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. He's already defeated. He already lost. That worry's got to go. That anxiety's got to go. The Bible says be strong and courageous. We don't follow worldly people. We do what the word of God says to do. We do what the word of God says to do. God's people are strong people. God's people are courageous. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it from the right hand or the left. The Lord has given you purpose. The Lord has given you identity. And if you don't know it yet, ask them. Because when you ask, you shall receive. You have not because you ask not. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you shall receive. Today the Lord has all the answers to your questions. And he wants to help you with whatever it is you're thinking. Whatever it is you're going through. The Lord is with you today. Homosexuality. The Lord loves those living in homosexuality. He hates the sin of it. Those who are in addiction, the Lord loves you. He does not like the addiction. Those who are living in alcoholism, the Lord loves you. He doesn't like the sin of, of alcoholism, of drunkenness. Sexually immoral, adultery, fornication, the things I always name. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, the Lord does not like those things, but he loves you. He loves you. The enemy twists it all up. Oh, who is this guy talking about homosexuality and drunkenness? Well, let me tell you, I care so much about you to expose the enemy and let you know you were not born that way. You were not born that way. Those are temptations and distractions to keep you from knowing Jesus and to get you to get mad at people like me that love you. Joshua 1, 7. Only be strong and courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. And do not turn from it to the right or to the left. Give your life to Jesus. Don't turn to the right or the left. I always say the only time I look back is to see how far God has taken me. Because I'm marching forward. I'm pressing forward. I'm running the race. I'm staying in step with the Holy Spirit all by the grace of God. 
we got to put on that belt of truth, that chest plate of righteousness, those shoes of peace, that helmet of salvation, that shield of faith, which is the most important because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the word of God that Jesus showed us in Matthew chapter four, how to fight the enemy off because the enemy was trying to fight the living word of God with the living word of God, but you can't fight the living word of God with the living word of God for the living word of God is the living word of God for in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus showed us in Matthew 4 how to fight the enemy off. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, many of you know this here. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. What's going through your head today? Sexual immorality or the word? What's going through your head today? Pornography or the word? What's going through your head today? Drugs or the word? What's going through your head today? Alcoholism or the word? What's going through your head today? Fear, worry, and anxiety or the word? What's going through your head today? People out in the world that say they care about you, but they don't or the word? What's going through your head today? Your own blood family that has neglected you, rejected you, abandoned you, doesn't care about you, or the living word of God? I have one family that's not my blood. My family are the ones who do the work of my father. I've been abandoned, neglected, rejected, and never been so hurt before by my own blood family that when I gave my life to Jesus, he told me that he's close to the brokenhearted. When I gave my life to Jesus, he said he's a father to the fatherless. I have the best heavenly father that anybody could ever ask for. If your earthly father did you wrong, Come into the body of Christ and you can have a heavenly father. If your siblings have done you wrong, come into the body of Christ because you'll get the greatest brothers and sisters in the Lord that you could ever ask for. My family is the one who does the work of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, the ones that call me, the ones that text me, the ones that pray for me, the ones that encourage me, the ones that say, I love you, the ones that check on me. And it's such a privilege to be a brother to them that I can call them, that I can text them, that I could take interest in their life, that I could tell them that I love them, that I could tell them that I care about them. The Bible says, this is the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it all day and night. You need to tell yourself that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You need to tell yourself that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You need to tell yourself that you got on the body of Christ, the, the body armor given in Ephesians 6. You need to tell yourself that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You need to tell yourself that you are special, that you are magnificent in the eyes of God. You need to tell yourself For when I'll make you prosperous and you will have good success, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord is with you wherever you go. And just like when Moses died, he was supposed to lead God's people into the promised land. But because he struck the rock a second time, instead of following the Lord's command of speaking to the rock, such a sin of disobeying the Lord, the Lord used them as a public spectacle to say, you disobeyed me. I can't allow you to bring my people into the promised land, but I'll be merciful and I'll be graceful and I'll let you see it, but you can't lead my people into it. 
And so when Moses died, the Lord called upon jo Joshua and allowed Joshua to, free the, to, to, to bring the Israelites into the promised land out of the land of bondage. If God has called you to something and you're running like Jonah, you can be replaced. If I wasn't on this television program today, oh, I could be replaced. There's many other people out there that can get up here and share the gospel. I can be replaced, but I don't want to be replaced. I love God with all I am. I love people as I love myself. I want to serve Jesus Christ. I want to live up to my calling. I want God to say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because the scariest thing that you could ever hear from God when Jesus comes back or when we die is depart from me, I never knew you. And here, people in this world are falling right into the trap of the enemy. They're more worried about worldly things and worldly people and worldly places than they are where they're going to spend eternity. No, not everybody goes to heaven because you are a good person. Because guess what? When I was living in my dirt and I was doing the, 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 the wrongest things out there in the world, I thought I was a good person. Hey, Hitler probably thought he was a good person. Heck, Putin probably thinks he's a good person. And no, those people who are not born again do not see the kingdom of God. Read Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. Remember, we can be replaced at any given time, but also remember to be ready because God is training you and equipping you. And he says, be strong and be courageous because he's got great plans for you. Please go on the website, reach out to me. It'd be a privilege to talk to you. If you see me in public, say hi. I love talking with you guys. It's a privilege. Nobody told you they love you today. I love you. God loves you. I pray you have a blessed rest of the day. In Jesus' name, let's go.